Dear participants, welcome to the second International Agro-Industry Forum 2018. Let us introduce you to the land of wonder and origins, Ethiopia. Comprising over 80 nations and nationalities, Ethiopia's people come out always stronger like never before in time of adversity, celebrating their unique and beautiful diversified culture hand in hand. This land is also a place for nine World Heritage Sites. This includes the magnificent rock-hewn church of Lalibela, the Semin Mountains, Aksum and many more. Its ancient civilization can also be traced going as far back as to the 1st century AD and straight to today's vibrant city and seat of the African Union headquarters, Addis Ababa. However, for so long the country has spent decades struggling to win over poverty. And recently, this struggle has started to bear fruit with the country registering a double-digit economic growth for the past decade, according to the World Bank. Envisioning joining the lower middle income countries of the world in 2025, Ethiopia is also moving forward to become the hub of light manufacturing in Africa. We are not only having a, a mere statement of vision, and we do have also in place a long term plan is how to achieve this vision. With this ambition in mind, the government is giving a prior focus for agro processing sector in order to bring the intended change in the economy. Ethiopia is an agrarian country and most of its population, I can say about 80% of the population, uh, they are dependent for their livelihood on agriculture. What we have is land, labor, the agroclimatical condition, water resource and so on. So to develop the economy, we can only create wealth out of these uh, potentials. Nevertheless, agriculture sector in Ethiopia can be said that it is pretty much in the backward phase. The sector, which is dominated by smallholder farmers, is challenged by lack of market which emanates from lack of market linkage rather than lack of demand. Mr. Getacho Gabri is one of the smallholder farmers located in the fertile land of southern Ethiopia in Yergalem city, 318 km from Addis Ababa. The place is known for its various fruits and coffee productions, but he recalls the time where there were little markets for these products. In the past, both the trees and the fruits were not well accepted in the market. Having no use, the avocado fruits used to fall on the ground and be eaten by ants. Similarly, going 414 km north of Addis Ababa to Bure city, which is known for the production of various crops including one of Ethiopia's staples, teff and other crops, such as wheat and maize, we found Mr. Brahani Ngida subscribing to the same problem. Since wheat and maize can be easily spoiled during storage, if we do not have market, we usually sell it to home distillators. And if that doesn't work out, we face loss. In addition to this, the country is said to lose on average over 20% of its total agricultural productions during post-harvesting period. Therefore, in order to overcome these challenges and capitalize on the existing natural and human resources of the country, the government has chosen to develop the agro-processing sector in a hope to create a forward and backward linkage between the agriculture and industry sectors, and ultimately revolutionize both the agriculture and the industry sectors. Industry can give value addition and long-term market, reliable, unlike the uh, raw material market. At the same time, industries also provide different inputs for agriculture to modernize. In order to implement this strategy, the Ministry of Industry, in partnership 
with the Ministry of Agriculture is set to establish 17 integrated agro-industrial parks in different parts of Ethiopia. These parks, which are said to transform the agriculture sector, will be a geographic cluster of firms grouped together to share different infrastructure and to exploit the opportunities for joint buying, selling, training, extension services and other synergies which can arise from shared efforts. In the business model, within this corridor which we call it a 100 km radius, we have the park where the cluster of industries are going to block it. But in turn, within the 100 km radius, we have a component called the Rural Transformation Center, which are going to be located on a 10 hectare within a satellite on different proximity you know, from the park. These Rural Transformation Centers, in turn, they are going to be uh, fit by what we call it aggregation centers. This is right at the village level, you know, where the farmers you know, bring their produce and submit or deliver. You know. Again, they are like uh, market centers, they are entry point. Currently, four pilot projects, encompassing around 100 hectares of land each, in Amhara region, in Bure, in Oromia region, in Bulbula, in Southern Nations and Nationalities People region, in Irgalem, and in Tigris region, in Humara, are underway. All of these areas are selected, meeting some fundamental criteria so that the parks could be a successful business ventures. Agricultural raw material is one of the critical uh, for the success of the infrastructure of different types. Power, telecom, water, uh, labor, uh, and uh, access to port, access to airport, uh, proximity to urban centers. All these are also other factors to be considered for having a successful industrial parks. We cannot uh, locate anywhere you know, industrial parks. We need to consider all this. The construction in these sites is going firmly in some places during day and night with the help of electric lights. With unshakable effort, the integrated agro-industrial park in Bure is expected to open its door for investors in the coming year. 260 hectares of land is cleared and being developed for the first phase of the construction of the park. Currently, we can say all the construction works have begun. The first thing we started building within a short period of time was temporary project facilitation office and camps. Next, we moved to building fences for the 260 hectares of land, and 72% of this work is completed. Giving prior focus, including concluding contractual agreements, all infrastructure development in the park have begun. Thus, 11.3 km road is paved for the construction of asphalt road. After this, to begin filling the asphalt, we are facilitating the provision of all the necessary construction inputs. Along this, we have started installing street lights and developing sewerage and drainage systems. In respect to water sources, six boreholes have been drilled with the capacity of providing a total of 92 liters of water per second. The federal government is also working with the regional governments in ensuring the provision of electricity in the park. On the side, Contract agreements for the construction of four shades have been also concluded last week. One can also witness the construction progress in Yirgalem Integrated Agro-Industrial Park, minutes by minutes. The park, which is the last cornerstone to be laid for, has currently embarked on carrying out its first phase construction and all constructions are done meeting all the required international safety standards ranging from fence structure to water quality test. It is said to be finalized in three months period. The first phase uh, focus on horizontal infra infrastructure and some uh, admin building, information cogs, training and retail space and creek and other utility like water. Additionally, Preparation is underway to tap to megawatt of electricity from the nearby city to power the park until the main substation is built. This will help investors to commence operation as soon as they get into the park without any further ado. In the meantime, 
Various investors have shown strong interest to join these development efforts. More than 100 investors came and expressing their interest. But we are going to reach an agreement 20 investors, both local and foreign investors. For foreign investors from China, many companies came for processing coffee, for roasting and grading uh, different activities. It is it's, it's, uh, the company, different companies came. From Korea, two companies came. From Netherlands, uh, from even from uh, Sudan, some companies came to invest here. Aside from benefiting from various amenities the parks provide, investors will also be enjoying various incentive packages. These includes income tax and custom duty exemptions. Depending on the unique characteristic of this rural industrialization, we are also studying uh, uh, if additional incentive packages required, whether it's fiscal or non-fiscal, we'll study it and bring to the attention of the government for decision. The government is ready enough to go all the way low to make this uh, park competitive. The surrounding communities are as well looking forward for the opening of the parks. When the investors and workers come, they are expected to bring change and growth to the city, and this means growth in the community. Also, if farmers can get buyers for their products with better price, they can also change their livelihoods. Furthermore, there is no one in this city who does not have two or three children who are educated. I myself have one daughter who is a university graduate and one who is attending college. So, the educated members of our families can get employment opportunities. With these and the other two additional parks coming into the scene shortly and combined with other developmental efforts, Ethiopia's economy is set to transform from agriculture-led to industry by 2020. The industry sector is expected to contribute 22.8% to the GDP. So come and let's embark on this noble journey together.